Hey everyone, it's about that time again when I give you my top 10 movies of the past year. I've done this type of thing the last two years and I really enjoy making these type of lists. But before I start, I gotta say that there's still a lot of 2012 release films that I haven't seen yet. Like The Master, Wreck-It Ralph, Moonrise Kingdom, Beasts of the Southern Wild, Silver Linings Playbook, and Les Mis. I also have a lot of honorable mentions that I really like but they just didn't quite make the list. Which include Life of Pi, God Bless America, End of Watch, Paranorman, Looper, Killer Joe, Lawless, Dread, The Hobbit, Ted, and Zero Dark Thirty. But now on to my real top 10 movies of 2012. Number 10, The Grey. The Grey really seemed to be a love it or hate it movie to most audiences. I can understand the criticism of the slow pace and the ambiguous ending, but I personally adored the film. Liam Neeson gives one of the most underrated performances of the year, if not one of the best of his career. The movie also has a lot of philosophical undertones about life and death and the existence of God. Plus, it's the only film I saw in 2012 that actually triggered a real emotional reaction now of me. Number 9, The Dark Knight Rises. I've seen The Dark Knight Rises being top of a lot of people's lists, but I couldn't go quite that far because of the jarring plot holes and the fact that it's an inferior follow-up to arguably the greatest comic book movie of all time. But as it stands, The Dark Knight Rises is a great film by its own merits. It has all the staples that you want in a Christopher Nolan Batman movie. The giant scope, the great set pieces, the dark tone, and the sheer ambition. And not to mention one of the best villains of the year, Bane. I am Gotham's Reckoning. That was terrible. Number 8, Chronicle. In an age of such an overabundance of found footage movies and superhero movies, Chronicle creatively combines the two in a really refreshing spin on both genres. It's got a smart script, solid character development, good visuals for its low budget, and great performances from these young and mostly unknown actors. I also really liked how these kids get powers and just use the powers to mess around and pull pranks instead of immediately using them to fight crime, since that's probably what I would do. Number 7, Cabin in the Woods. I'm a sucker for a good horror comedy and Cabin in the Woods hit the spot perfectly. It's an excellent deconstruction of all the silly cliches and tropes of horror films, but at the same time it's a loving homage to the horror movies such as Evil Dead. It's got such a witty script, hilarious moments, and that final act just has to be seen to believed. It's one of those movies where the less you know about it, the more you'll enjoy it, so if you haven't seen it yet, just go in blind and you'll really enjoy the ride. Number 6. Skyfall. This is the movie that converted me into being a Bond fan. I mean, I like Casino Royale, but Skyfall truly sold me on the franchise and it inspired me to revisit some of the classic Bond movies. And having watched a lot of them, I can still safely say that Skyfall ranks up with the best of them. I love the Christopher Nolan inspired dark tone, the great set pieces, the beautiful cinematography, and the emotional and thought provoking moments. Daniel Craig and Dame Judi Dench were great, but it's Javier Bardem as the villain that truly stole the show for me and is one of my favorite villains of the year. Number 5, Seven Psychopaths. From the director Vim Bruges, we get another hilarious yet extremely violent dark comedy. It's got one of the best scripts of the year with a lot of meta humor and really witty one-liners. Plus great performances from Colin Farrell and Woody Harrelson, and in particular Sam Rockwell and Christopher Walken who are just amazing in the film. Number 4, The Avengers. This is just the ultimate fanboy movie in my opinion. It's such a crowd-pleasing movie in so many ways. We get to see all these badass superheroes kicking ass together, finally. With great dialogue, funny one-liners that all feel so perfectly balanced. And not to mention one hell of an action climax that makes The Avengers one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. Number 3, Argo. I really respect Ben Affleck for turning his career around. He's gone from being a laughingstock of an actor to consecutively directing three outstanding films. The most recent of which, Argo, features a great ensemble cast with John Goodman, Alan Alda, and Brian Cranston all bringing their A-game. It's a history lesson, it's hilarious, and the last 20 minutes had me extremely on edge. And if you don't like it, then Argo, fuck yourself. Number 2, Django Unchained. Quentin Tarantino really is one of my favorite directors of all time, and Django Unchained delivers everything you want in a Tarantino flick. It's a stylish throwback to spaghetti westerns and black exploitation with a perfect mix of gore and humor plus the classic Tarantino dialogue we've all grown to expect. It has an all-star cast of Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, and Samuel Jackson all giving some of the best performances of their career, but in particular Leonardo DiCaprio blew me away, and I'm pretty annoyed at the Academy Board for not at least giving him a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Django Unchained is yet another Tarantino masterpiece, and I'd even go so far to say it's his best film since Pulp Fiction. And number one, The Raid Redemption. 
I have to admit that The Raid of Redemption doesn't have a lot of things that I look for in a great film. Such as memorable performances, quotable lines, an original story, or even character development. But what The Raid lacks in those aspects that completely redeems itself in terms of non-stop brutality and intense action sequences. The Raid is pretty much what you'd get if John Woo directed Die Hard. It's a perfectly paced, adrenaline-packed ride that never slows down for a second. The sheer choreography for the film is just so remarkable, and that makes The Raid easily the best action movie in the last 10 years, and therefore is my favorite movie of 2012. Just try and watch it before the inevitably inferior American remake. So that's my top 10 movies of 2012, a lot of really great films, and I'm looking forward to see what 2013 has in store. Thanks for watching.